Hi everybody. Um, this is the second and third reading of Nothing Gold Can Say by Robert Frost. You should have already read the poem to yourself and answered that first set of reading questions. If you have not done that, please pause the video now and go take care of it. Um, before, or I'm sorry, so that we can move on. And those of you that are ready to move on, let's do so. Um, so I'm going to read Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Foss to you, and let's go ahead and get started. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves of flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Okay. Um, before you kind of go off and answer the second set of questions and before you get into the third reading, um, I want to hopefully break this down for you to give you a better understanding because I'm sure there are at least a couple of you that are kind of lost with what this poem is saying, which is fine, right? I said in the beginning that I knew this poetry unit was going to be difficult and that's okay, right? Um, the unfortunate thing is I cannot be there in person to answer any direct questions that you may have. Um, so I'm going to do my best to explain things. If there is a question that I did not answer that you still have, you need to email me or message me so that I can help you with that. Um, obviously I cannot read minds and I'm either even further from that with being at home. So you need to be responsible and proactive and ask your questions um, through email or message. Okay, so the first thing I want to break down for you guys um, and discuss with this poem is the idea of the couplet um, that was in the Poetry Devices slide in the Google um, slideshow that I gave you over the notes for this poem and Robert Frost. Um, and if you don't remember, a couplet is two lines of poetry that rhyme with each other and have the same meter. Um, so let me just point them out to you in the poem. So in the first two lines, nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Gold and hold rhyme. So those both get A's if we were to map out the rhyme scheme. That is our first couplet. So those two lines of poetry, those rhyme together, they have the same meter. So th that is our first couplet. We move down to our second two lines. Her early leaves of flower, but only so an hour. So flower and hour do not rhyme with gold and hold, but they do rhyme with each other. So those get B's. This is our second example of a couplet. Then we move down to the next two lines. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. Leaf and grief, again, those rhyme, but they don't rhyme with the lines above it, so those get C's. Um, that is our third couplet. And finally, so dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Day and stay rhyme with each other, but none of the lines above it. So those get D's, and that is our final example of a couplet. Um, so yeah, that's what the couplets are, just to give you a visual understanding. Um, another thing I want to point out to you, actually, before we do that, hold on, sorry. A little scatterbrained. Um, I want to kind of break down what those themes we talked about also in the notes are and how they fit into this poem. So the themes that I pointed out and we discussed, at least, you know, one side of discussion, um, is that transition or transience and the idea that beauty is fleeting. So transition and transience means change, essentially. Like when you transition from 7th to 8th grade, that's a change, right? You are moving up. Um, transience can also mean um, like the leaves. Those are transients, Le leaves on trees. They go through that cycle of being green in the spring and summer, and then fall hits where they turn an orange, red, or brown, and then in the winter they fall off, right? That is the life cycle of a leaf that shows that they are transient, which means they change. Um, and then finally, um, the how beauty can be fleeting. Fleeting means that it kind of, it comes and it goes. So again, this idea that it's it changes, it's not permanent, um, it can go away. So that's what the what the meaning behind this poem is, essentially, that things are always changing, okay? Um, and we can see that just in the first two lines. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. So obviously in the spring, things are new and fresh and they're growing and they're bright and colorful. Um, 
but the spring doesn't last long, right? That's like probably one of the shortest seasons we experience, especially in Northwest Indiana. Um, so that kind of brings us down to our, her hardest hue to hold. So this idea that um, new beauty and freshness and um, spring even itself doesn't last, right? It's transient, the weather is transient, our seasons are transient, it is always changing, okay? Um, so that, that kind of breaks down what the theme of the poem is, the themes of the poem are, I'm sorry. Um, another thing I wanna point out is the illusion. So illusion with an A. And to remind you, an illusion is when a text, in this case our poem, um, references something historical, or literary or whatever. In this case, it is a historical um, piece of literature, and that is the Bible. Um, and we see this where it references, so Eden sank to grief. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the Christian religion or the Catholic religion, um, in the First Testament, Eden, the Garden of Eden, essentially is where Adam and Eve, the first man and first woman, lived um, before Eve ate the apple, and um, Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden, which was paradise on earth um, because of Eve committing that first sin. Um, so that's what it's referencing, is the Garden of Eden in this poem. Um, and it also goes with the idea that everything changes, um, beauty cannot last, right? Nothing gold can stay. And that's exactly what that line is referencing to. So just hopefully this kind of gives you a better understanding about what the poem is talking about. Um, again, if your questions were not answered, please, please, please email or message me and I will do my best to explain it to you. Um, in the meantime, please pause the video, go answer the second set of reading questions. And when you're done, come back to watch the YouTube video for the third and final reading. Okay, so here's our YouTube video. Um, honestly, this one is super cool, guys. I think you're going to like it. It's kind of, you know, sad a little bit. Um, but I, And I think it is actually Robert Frost reading it, but I'm not sure. But here's our third reading. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so now. Then leaves subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. All right, and there you have it, our third and final reading. Um, so now go ahead and go back to Schoology, answer that third and final set of questions. Again, like I said earlier, if you have questions that I did not answer in that kind of brief breakdown before, please message or email me so that I can um, make sure your questions get answered. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, hopefully I will see you all soon. Thank you.